So we got Ren Money Game Part Two. So look, I've been thinking about some of the lyrics from Animal Flow. All right, and I think I might have figured it out. Now look, I originally thought when he said, "Yes, I will wage war on the Capitol," that means he was defending what they did. All right. I don't think that's the case. Here's what I think it might actually be. I'm sure you guys are a lot more familiar with Ren and what his, you know, views are on everything. So please let me know if I'm wrong. I'm just telling you what I'm thinking so far. All right. So we saw in Money Game Part 1, he was playing the role of the villain. Also, in Animal Flow, he was playing the role of the animal, with the animal instincts, right? Because he was talking about how he would just completely devour the land, right? So, I think ultimately, what he's saying is, is it's basically the land of confusion, the land of chaos, right? That is what we've become. Also, I watched quite a few reactions to the first money game since I did mine. You know, I always wait until I do my reaction. Then I'll start watching other reactors just to see if, you know, they thought the same thing I did or whatever else. And there was quite a few people that didn't understand the last... Uh, phase of the video, but I think I got it. There was a lyric in there. As the world turns, the world burns. Hence, the the imagery we got in the last phase with him essentially burning himself. Or he was going to burn the puppet. But for some reason, he said, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to burn myself. Now, here's what I think that boils down to. So, what if uh, firefighters started wanting payment before they come and put out your fire? Regardless of whether the state's paying them or not, they look at it like, we're providing a service to you, and you need to pay us for that service. So, you call 911, hey, my house is on fire, I need help. That'll be $50. Are you serious? And then it's like, okay, fine. Can you come put out my fire? You have to pay up front. Or else we're not going to come and do anything. Right? Could you imagine the catastrophe that would come out of that? All right. Pretty much no one's houses would be safe. Unless they, you know got either smarter about safety, which they should do anyways. Um, but other than that, like most of everybody else, they're not going to have a chance. What is going to happen from that if the firefighter's neighbor's house catches on fire and then they can't pay the $50 for the firefighters to come put out his house. Now I think you might be starting to see where I'm going with this. If you ignore problems and just let them fester. And just keep compiling on to the chaos. The greed. The corruption. Eventually. That corruption is going to come back around. And you're going to suffer the consequences. Just like everyone else. All right. By those firefighters deciding to do that, eventually their house is going to burn down too. Not just the people who couldn't afford to pay them the service fee. All right. So we're going to check out both of these videos. So we got the video right here. Then we're going to do a lyric video. All right. Money is a game, and the ladder we climb, 
will turn a saint into a sinner with his finger in crime. I'll break it down for you motherfuckers line by line. This is business economics in the nursery rhyme. She sells seashells on the seashore, but the value of these shells will fall due to the laws of supply and demand. No one wants to buy shells because there's loads on the sand. Step one, you must create a sense of scarcity. These shells will sell much better if the okay. people think they're rare, you see. Bear with me, take as many shells as you can find and hide them on an island stock, pile them high until they're rarer than a diamond. Step two, you've got to make the people think that they want them. Really want them. Really fucking want them. Hit them like Bronson with influencers, product placement, featured primetime entertainment. If you haven't got a shell, you're just a fucking waste man free. It's Monopoly. Invest inside some property. Start a corporation, make a logo, do it properly. Shells must sell, that will be your new philosophy Swallow all your morals, they're a poor man's quality Four, expand, expand, expand Clear forests, make land, fresh blood on hand Five, why just shells? Why limit yourself? She sells seashells, sell oil as well Six guns, sell stocks, sell diamonds, sell rocks Sell water to a fish, sell the time to a clock Seven, press on the gas, take your foot off the brakes then run to be the president of the United States. Eight, big smile, mate, big wave, that's great. The truth is overrated, tell lies out the gate. Nine, polarize the people. So look, something else that I've been confused about was that he would talk about United States government and the United Kingdom government at the same time. And I was like, I don't understand that because usually you would have someone like just focus on one country because a lot of the countries are going to be very different all right um but with Ren, i don't think he focuses on just one country this country or that country like he's focusing on the whole thing like everything controversy is the game it don't matter if they hate you if they all say your name 10. The world is yours. Step out on the stage to a round of applause. You're a liar, a cheat, a devil, a whore. And you sell seashells on the seashore. Oh, rain, 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 rain. The storm, it comes our way. And those who rise through distorted lies a poison in the vase But we like to point the blame, 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 blame It's easier to blame To point the mirror at ourselves and We're all part of this old money game I love that line right there It's easier to play the blame game To point the mirror at ourselves And realize We're part of the problem too This old money game. All right, let's go ahead and check out the lyric video now. So far, this one sounds more like a song. I don't think what we just watched, I don't think that was actually Money Game Part 2. I think that was just kind of like a monologue, just kind of summarizing what Money Game is all about. I think that might be what was going on there. Strange time of living in panic and hysteria. Poor man, learn the rich man don't care for your narcissist mindset spread like malaria. Sit back and watch the show. America, Britain split through fickle shit. A government of hypocrites. These counterfeit politicians sit in parliament. Not adequate. Come on. Needlessly bleeding resources all dry. Turn a blind eye if it means a pay rise. Oh, what a shame it would be, I would die. If number 10 Downing Street burned in a fire. Only joking, only so basically, these politicians are just so greedy and so hell bent on getting more and more profits, and they don't care what the consequences are. So, what I'm getting from this so far 
I think this has a lot to do with climate change. All right. I mean, it's even in the lyrics from Sick Boy. All right. If you bleed the earth of everything, what will remain? All right. That is what I think we're talking about here, but more specifically, right? Messing, don't be stressing, I'm a peaceful adolescent There's no need to be unpleasant Write my thesis in a rhyme scheme To analyze the brain While my finger's on the trigger of a money game Oh, rain, 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 rain A storm, it comes our way And no surprise to distorted lies Poison in the face But we die upon the blame, 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 blame It's easier to blame We point the mirror right ourselves We're all part of this whole money game game and the ladder we climb turns a saint into a sinner with his finger in crime i'll break uh, it down for you motherfuckers line by line this is business economics in the nursery rhyme uh, she sells seashells on a seashore but the value of the okay so now i'm seeing what we were looking at a minute ago so that was just taking part of this song all right so what i'm getting right here is but the value of these shells will fall. So he's talking about like a recession, right? And then I know from, you know, watching the other video just now, he was talking about supply and demand. You know, which that has a lot to do with the value of a product. So maybe the value of the seashells falls because eventually people realized like wait a minute we can just go pick up all we want for free we don't have to buy these things these shells will fall due to the laws of supply and demand no one wants to buy shells because there's loads on the sands that one must so because the supply is so great eventually people are going to realize that we're going to say you know what we don't need to buy these things we got all we need. So now he's going to tell us how they will artificially inflate the value. You must create a sense of scarcity. Make it seem like they're harder to get. Ah, I think now we're starting to build a better picture of what he's talking about. All right. I think he's talking about inflation. So in order to justify inflation, what do they have to tell us? Supplies are running low. It's getting harder to make these products. So you have to pay us more money in order to keep making the products, right? But the question is, are they lying to us? Or is it actually getting more difficult to create the products, right? Scarcity. Shells will sell much better if the people think they're rare, you see. Bear with me. Take as many shells as you can find and hide them on an island. Stop pile them high until they're okay. rather than the diamond step two. Gotta make the people think that they want them. Really want them. Really fucking want them. Hit them like Bronson. Influencers, product placement, featured primetime entertainment. If you haven't got a shell, then you're just a fucking waste, man. Free. It's Monopoly. Invest inside some property. Start a corporation, make a logo, do it properly. Shells must sell. That will be a new philosophy. Swallow all your morals. They're a poor man's quality. For expand, expand, expand. Expand, clear forest, make land, fresh blood on hands, five. Why just shells? Why limit yourself? She sells seashells, sell oil as well. Six on, sell stock, sell diamonds, sell rock, sell water to a fish, sell the time to a clock, seven. Press on the gas, take your foot off the brakes. Then run to be the president of the United States. Eight big smile, make big wave, that's great. Now the truth is overrated, tell lies out the gate. Nine, polarize the people, controversy is the game. It don't matter if they hate you, if they all say your name. Ten. The world is yours. Step out on the stage to a round of applause. You're a liar, cheat, a devil, a whore. And you sell seashells on the seashore. Rain, 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 rain. A storm, it comes our way. 
and no surprise to distorted lies. Poison in the face, but we die upon the blame, 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 blame. It's easier to blame. We point the mirror at ourselves. We're all part of this. So basically saying no one is innocent. All right. That's basically what I'm getting out of that. So he's saying we're all guilty. You know what I'm saying? This old money game. This old. So what my question is, what would be a solution to the problem? You know, it seems that all the people who could actually change things and make things better, they're the ones profiting the most. All right. So how do you convince people who are greedy and exploding with corruption to start valuing other people more than themselves because that's really the problem you know these people they look at themselves like they are above everyone else and they deserve everything all right you know and i saw a video i don't remember who it was but they were doing a uh an interview and the basic consensus of, of this guy's point of view, talking about poverty, keep them poor. And this was coming from a businessman. He, he wants to keep the poor people, he wants to keep them in poverty. That doesn't make sense to me. And here's why. You know, if I run a business selling cars, let's say, right, I want my potential customers to have as much money as possible if all my potential customers doesn't have good credit and doesn't have really any money at all are they really a customer no you're not going to sell them a car and they're probably not even going to stop to look because they know the cars you have they can't afford them so they're not even going to stop So what if inflation went down and these people started having more money? For me, just hypothetical here, I, I run this car lot. I'm jumping up for joy because I know my potential customer base just went up. Because there's a lot more people now that has more money. So that is my goal. You know, I want my entire community to be as well off as possible all right because that is a lot more people that could afford to come to my car lot and buy these really nice cars all right you know but instead with that mindset no we only want like the the really wealthy people to come to our car lots so i think my views on that makes sense while keep them poor just doesn't it really doesn't you know is that good for the economy no it's not even just with cars if the people living in a city has more money they have more money to spend they can you know get more expensive vehicles they can you know get more expensive housing they can you know get more expensive you know they can spend a lot more at grocery stores they can buy bigger TVs for example right so that's good for retail you know and that's is not to say that we need to try and keep everything balanced everyone needs to be on the same playing field or anything like that I'm not saying that at all 
but they could definitely you know open up more opportunities for people who are living in poverty right you know just because you're living in poverty doesn't mean that you couldn't own a business or that you could you know manage a multi-million dollar company doesn't mean that at all the only thing it means is you don't have the capital to invest in such a thing right so that is just out of the realm of possibility for that person you know it really all boils down to credit and what do people in poverty usually not have it's good credit all right it goes hand in hand this whole credit thing in my opinion like that is a big part of the problem it's great for people that has good credit it really is but if you don't have good credit you know then your options are very limited you know and the problem with that is once you have bad credit most companies won't even allow you to get a small loan to start building up your credit at all like they don't want nothing to do with you all right i'm, I'm going through that myself so it's not like i don't know what i'm talking about all right i get it you know and then i could even give you a scenario of someone who has good credit but could very easily go into poverty and not have anything and even come out with really terrible credit all right suppose you get in a car wreck someone smashes into you they didn't have insurance so now you have a total car you have you know you have to go through physical therapy you're probably going to lose your job because you're not going to be able to work anymore at least for quite a while until you go through surgeries recovery and most jobs are not just going to say take all the time you need you know just take six months off for recovery most jobs are going to say that's okay you take you know forever off because you're never coming back all right that's what a lot of jobs are going to tell you so now you've lost your job probably going to lose your house too because now you can't afford to pay your rent all right you know and then on top of that you also have all these medical bills coming in, right that of course you can't afford to pay for and what's going to happen once all those start going to collectors going to take your credit down so i think it it's really you know i think it's just a bad system for people who are less fortunate all right that's just the way it is also one last point i want to get to in the last video i said something that was actually incorrect all right now i'm actually going to go ahead and pull up a web browser here and i'm going to go through a couple of things that i got wrong from the last video all right so in the last video we were talking about socialism versus capitalism all right now i made a misstatement about socialism all right in that i said that socialism doesn't want everyone to be equal you know it just wants the gap to be as small as possible right not to say everyone needs to be equal but to say you know let's try and help the middle and lower class as much as possible to give them a fair chance at you know becoming successful and increasing their overall wealth right that's not actually true because i did some research after i did that video and what i found out was that's exactly what socialism wants they want equality of outcome they want everyone to be equal now in a perfect world i would say sure you know why not what's the harm in that but we don't live in a perfect world 
All right. A system like this would do a lot more harm than good. Now, while I was wrong about what the goal is of socialism, that's not to say everything about socialism is wrong or bad. The basic sentiment still holds true. You want to have balance, all right? Some socialism and some capitalism, but not too far in either direction, all right? A political and economic theory of social organization which advocates the means of pro production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. So what I take from this is, like, we don't need to have a company like Walmart be controlled by Walmart. It needs to be controlled by the people. So the people could say, you need to do, you need to pay your workers more. You need to not charge so much for these products, right? And it even says owned. So that means one person couldn't own their own business. That is a terrible idea. You know, and I could tell whoever it is that advocates for this, you don't know anyone that owns a business. You've never owned a business, and none of your family has ever owned a business. Because if they did, you would understand that if you work your entire life to build up a business, you're not going to want to have someone who wants all socialists to come through and say, hey, you don't need to have that business anymore. You have too much power. Uh, I disagree with that. If you've worked for it, you've earned it. All right. We want a real democratic and pluralist left party. One which unites all those who believe in socialism. So in other words, because I don't advocate for full socialism, they wouldn't want me advocating for them. All right. So I think we have to understand that there's different levels of each of these different types of things, right? There's different levels to it. You know, and it's like I said, balance is key. For every policy, for every ideology, for everything like that, there needs to have uh, something going against it and, and questioning its motives. And the same way, the other way around, right? That is what balance is for, is to keep one ideology, one, you know, theory or anything else to just take over everything. Because then what you have is a dictatorship. And that is probably the worst thing we could have. Because in that, there's no more checks and balances. They could end up saying, well, this is now what we want. And now there's no one left to challenge them. You know, because they're all in their own echo chambers. All right. And as far as the critique against capitalism, all right, that pretty much holds true as well, because I did some research into that. All right. It is basically this. If you go all the way towards capitalism, then all the people who depend on social services, well, guess what? They're left with nothing now. All right. So the economy would crash. Poverty rates would go through the roof. Uh, towns, neighborhoods, like, they would all crumble. All right. And ultimately, the line from the first money game, as the world turns, the world burns. If you go all the way towards capitalism, that's what you'll get, without a doubt. All right. 
So for everyone who complains about socialism, like it's a horrible thing, we should never have socialism, please be more specific, all right? You know, because what I would like to ask someone who says that, are you saying we shouldn't have any social programs at all to help needy families? Probably not. That's not what they're advocating for. What they're advocating for is saying full socialism is bad. And I totally agree with that. But the way it comes across is anything related to socialism is bad and we shouldn't have it. All right. Uh, so they're not being very specific. See what I'm saying? So just to make sure I fully back up everything I'm saying, I'm going to go ahead and try and find some specific information that socialism relates to social programs that helps needy families. Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, those kinds of things, all right? Socialist ideals include production for use rather than for profit. Now, of course, keeping in mind, you can have, which is what we do have in the United States and a lot of other countries as well, part socialism, part capitalism. All right. So this part right here, we don't have that and we don't want it. All right. It is perfectly okay for companies to make profit. That's how they keep going. You know, we need companies to make profit. If companies stop making profit, that means they'll go under and we can't go to Walmart anymore and buy our groceries. We need to be able to buy groceries. If gas stations go under, well, guess what? Now we can't buy gas because there's no more gas stations. All right, so we can't just hate profit altogether. All right, profit is what keeps the economy going. Now, I do agree, though, that there should be a limit, a cap on your profit. If something only costs you a dollar to make, you shouldn't be able to charge, you know, $10,000 for it. All right, that is just not fair. If your production costs go up, then I understand that, okay, production costs went up, it, it's harder to make now, you know, it's costing us more money to get the resources we need, so you guys are going to have to pay more to get this product. I totally understand that, but don't lie to the people either and just make up a problem that doesn't exist just to justify inflation, all right? An equitable distribution of wealth and material resources. So I think the second part, we also don't have that and also don't want it. All right. Equitable distribution of wealth and material resources among all people. So in other words, all people must be equal. No more competitive buying and selling in the market, and free access to goods and services. This is the part we have, and this is the part we want. But that is for specific people who qualify for those programs. You know, and as far as the competitive buying, we have competitive buying. It is not bad, all right? So, I know we were, aren't really talking about communism, but I wanted to click on it anyways. All right. Communism versus socialism. What's the difference? Communism and socialism are political and economic systems that share certain ideologies, including greater equality in the distribution of income. Both are rejections of capitalism, instead giving economic power to the working class. But instead of just dictating and saying, you get this, you get this, and you get that, you could just 
make it easier for people in lower class and people that are further disadvantaged to have easier access to become more successful in life. All right. That really wouldn't be that hard to do. One way communism differs from socialism historically is that the former calls for the transfer of power to the working class through revolutionary rather than gradual means. Just like I said, if you're going to go and dictate to people, you get this, you get that, and you get this, that's when you start to run into problems. Because now, whoever it is that's making that decision, you better hope they're making good decisions. Because if they're not, you know, everything's going to fall apart. And that's essentially what happens. Both communism and socialism advocate public control of the means of production. Although socialism allows for the continued existence of capitalism in some parts of the economy. In reality, communist systems have been very successful to date. Surely I just read that one. So, at this point, I'm starting to question the author of this article. All right, because with this, this doesn't seem, you know, very accurate at all. You know, what you're doing here is you're saying all capitalism is bad. That's basically what you're saying, because communism is the basic opposite of capitalism, right? They don't allow for any capitalist systems at all. Unless, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe that statement is actually correct. That's something that we can definitely look into. Communism. At its most basic, communism is a philosophy based on the equitable distribution of wealth among a nation's citizens, and common ownership of all property in particular, it called for the control of the means of production, such as manufacturing and agriculture by the working class. Its ultimate goal was achieving a classless society, at which point the state or government would wither away. You just think about that for a moment. Yeah, I don't want to read any more of this, but I think ultimately we got a pretty good idea of the basics of these two, you know, similar uh, systems here. All right. You know, socialism is a step away from capitalism. So maybe if you're going full socialism, then like you're right into full-blown communism, right? And that's not a good thing. So in other words, both systems has good points and bad points. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and leave it there. You know, I usually don't you know, do very much research and going into fine details on this channel. I have another channel for that. But I'm assuming for the fans of Rin, when they watch reaction videos, I'm hoping they're going to want to have someone actually go through and understand and break down the topics that he's talking about. All right. That's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I understand if you don't like long videos, you just want to see people, you know, talk about the song and if they like it or not, what they liked about the lyrics and, you know, they agree or disagree and that's it. 
totally fine. Lots and lots of channels out there that does exactly that. This is not really that channel. I do that a little bit here and there, but this is where my passion is. It is breaking down lyrics, understanding messages behind the songs and the videos. All right. You know, and I also try to keep from going into political debates over here as well. Because I understand a lot of people, they want to watch reaction videos for entertainment. Not for someone to, you know, talk about politics, right? So, I've steered away from doing that over here. If you like long-form discussions like that, you're more than welcome to go check out my research chain right i talk about pretty much everything over there not so much over here most of what i do over here is most is mostly for entertainment however when i get something like this that is so impactful and just has so many great points to say you know what it except for when i get an artist like this that is so intelligent and has a lot of important things to say, I think it will be a disservice for me to just do the reactions really fast and that's it, and not go into the lyrics or anything else. I can't do that. There is, like, to put it simply, he spends a lot of time working on his lyrics, working on his videos to make a statement, to express how he feels about things. And I think for anyone who is a serious fan of Rin, should at least appreciate that and want to hear and understand his messages. Whether we agree or not, it's still important to at least listen. You know to the words and the messages not just listen to the song all right so all right let me know what y'all think about all this that's it for now y'all